Hi guys, it's Ant, formerly from UK Fountain Pens. It's been a while. I wanted to record a little video just showing where the state of my collection is up to as of now, towards the end of July 2022. Um, I'm very pleased to say, or you might be dismayed to find, that really not much has changed uh, in the past six weeks or so. Um, one pen that's not shown here in this tray is the Pelican M605 Black Tortoise, which I bought, really enjoy, um, but it's not going to make it into the final tray of uh, that will be with me through the rest of my life. So that is in my for sale pile at the moment. And actually I have quite a few pens for sale. So I will possibly be recording a video about those shortly. But what we have here is 10 pens, full size, plus two pocket pens. And I'm really happy with where I've ended up. Um, a lot of these pens have a kind of story or, or they're a, a revisiting of an old pen for me. So um, the exception to that is this one here on the far left. This is the Matthew Martin Homage, uh, which is a titanium pen. And it's possibly one of the most uh, expensive steel nibbed pens that I've ever bought. Uh, it is machine titanium with uh, rounded domed ends, a little beveled step on the end of the cap. The inside is lined with Delrin and an O-ring. The cap goes on and off in little under half a, th half a turn. And it has an O-ring sealing the section onto the barrel as well. Basically what this is is the, the most thought through, most refined machined pen that I've purchased yet. Uh, and that's why it's stuck in my collection uh, so far uh, when and was a conscious purchase for me when a lot of other metal pens from the likes of Karas just lacked that slight refinement that I'd be looking for to make to make them stand up against a lot of these other pens. As you can see I have a Platinum 3776 soft fine nib in here with the original um, feed in a flexible nib factory uh, unit. The downside with this is I have it eye droppered at the moment and uh, it burps like crazy. The ink pack practically runs out so I'm waiting for Flexible Nib Factory to come up with a feed that's got a converter nipple on the end so I can use it with a pilot converter. But as you can see the, the section is lovely and long, has this uh, dishing to it, it fits perfectly and it is the best cap action I've used yet. The Auto Hut Design C is starting to look, look pretty dinged up, fingerprint covered, scratched. Uh, that's the nature of a raw, polished silver finish. Um, it's still one of the most distinctive uh, hand feels and um, most notably designed pens in my collection. Uh, it really uh, feels weighty, back heavy, yeah, things that I wouldn't necessarily like, but it has such personality to it. And much like the Matthew Martin, a, an amazing uh, capping action, and the nib is just beautiful too. So this pen, limited edition of 500, not going to be leaving my collection anytime soon. The Martelet you will be familiar with. This pen I've had for a good couple of years now. Um, it's still inked with Waringal Lost from the Demian mini series, which I think really suits the personality of the pen. It has a fine nib, which is not fine by Japanese standards. But writes uh, beautifully smoothly with just the right level of wetness and really as anyone who sees this pen will, will know it's the the faceted hammer, hammered finish uh, that really makes it stand out the 149 i've had several 149s over the years um five or six of them this one is the, the one that i wanted all along it's the platinum finish so no gold trim here uh, and it is an extra fine tritone nib and it writes a very uh, fine for Mont Blanc and wet line. There's no bounds to it but that's fine because I don't use flex. And the 149 to me is the, the perfect pen in terms of size, weight, uh, proportions. Funnily enough the cap, the cap takes one more turn to do than the old 149 I used to have, the one from about 30 years ago, uh, but it's still quick and easy every time. So 149 is always going to stay in my collection and I'm, I'm very happy with this one. Um, I would say the same about this pen, the Anoto Magna Midsummer Night, and this is a custom version made just for me by the lovely people at Anoto. So it says custom on the back. 
Um, what's custom about this is two things. One, the cap threads are under two turns. Secondly, it has this glorious number eight gold nib uh, with ebonite feed in a fine designation and inside is an Oto's redesigned plunger filler mechanism which takes a ton of ink. This is ink at the moment with the Atramentis aubergine. The plunger filler, as you can see, it's, it's metal, it's brass, it fills the converter at uh, the barrel perfectly, it fits flush with the section and what that means is that it ends up adding a decent amount of weight to the pen much as the barrel weight option does from an Oto. But again, perfect proportions, perfect size, wonderful nib and with that shorter cap action a very practical pen to use for me as well. I had a turquoise Montegrappa Extra from Chatterley Pens uh, probably three years ago now and I sold it because the medium nib was just a bit too dry for me and I wasn't finding myself using it and it dried out a bit um, but as you can see and the, the green tint of the turquoise is not coming through on the camera but this is one of the most beautiful celluloids out there um, so this is a Korea Pens exclusive I bought it thanks to um, Ali of Stilo Calibre uh, who recommended it to me and this pen is everything I wanted it to be so it takes me back to my uh, the enjoyment I had of the, the extra originally, this is the Otto version, so it's eight-sided. Uh, the facets are great. I love this um, big, chunky, patterned cap band. It's got the Greek key nib from Montegrappa's Vold, sterling silver grip, as you can see from the fact it's tarnishing. This is an extra fine nib, and it was uh, a little dry. Not in a bad way, but in a very precise way. I have loosened it up, so it now writes possibly a little bit more like a fine and certainly wetter. Uh, it's got the ratcheting piston inside uh, and all the facets line up beautifully. This is a very, very well-made pen. Really happy with it. The Pilot Capless Wish Edition still, to me, is uh, brings a smile to my face every time. You can see the stars at the top of the night sky going down to the setting sun near the cap. Uh, it's a really pretty uh, concept for a pen and well executed as well, although printed as you can see. Um, what I, I, I've never particularly liked the aesthetics of the Pilot Capless, the Vanishing Point. Uh, it it's, doesn't feel so big to me as it did back in the day, I've got used to larger pens. But what keeps me coming back to this one is partly the aesthetic of that of that pattern but also how great the nib units are this is an 18 carat fine and it just writes great and it doesn't dry out ever uh, it's a really really good work pen and has that um, writing performance that I look for in a pen when I'm journaling as well uh, those of you who've, who've spoken with me or read my stuff over the years will, will know that I am a huge fan of the Lamy 2000 uh, it's my candidate probably for the best pen full stop uh, certainly at its price point uh, this is the the Bauhaus blue edition from 2019 um, I have owned the lovely brown version as well uh, but the one I decided to keep out of the 10 is this blue one it has the extra fine nib as uh, all of the Bauhaus blue did and it writes amazingly well what I love about the 2000 is you can hold it any way you like on the barrel and you get no step, uh, you get a, a perfectly comfortable hold. It also just looks killer. It still looks futuristic even after well, however many years ago 1966 was. I have a Sean uh, Black Ultim uh, engineered plastics pen here. The, the only thing I don't like about it perhaps is that it can be a bit stiff to get the cap off and because it's eyedropper I have to hold it nib up otherwise I can flood the cap with ink. What you see here is I have a King of Pen nib in it in a medium designation which is um, wet and smooth and surprisingly broad actually. Um, it's using a flexible nib factory feed and uh, unit, um, not feed, just the unit uh, and the Sean number no. 8 grip section and this is eyedroppered with uh, Mont Blanc Lapis Lazuli. It's great. I've actually used up a whole barrel, which is more than four mil of ink, and re-inked it straight up with the same ink again. Uh, it's a it's a killer combination and a, a really stealth pen because from the outside it really doesn't look like much. And this, 
the Kasama Una Panahon. Uh, this Kasama haven't posted on Instagram this year. I don't know whether they are just continuing to fly under the radar. Um, if I sold this pen, I doubt I would be able to get another one. So I'm hanging on to it for now, even though occasionally I do think I don't use this pen enough, I should get rid of it. This is Peak. Uh, it's Peak impregnated with stone. Uh, and this is flamed titanium in purple and blue. As you can see, it has a Franklin Christoph extra fine ground to a needle point in there, and it's just using a, a cartridge, uh, just using a converter inside. Uh, it's a very distinctive pen in its aesthetics. I find it exceptionally comfortable. The fingers nestle just right, and because the nib is a little bit further from the fingers, I get a really real feeling of spaciousness on the page. It's short and chunky, but really good to hold. And that brings me to my two pocket pens. I've had the Sean Pocket 6. I've had about eight or nine of these, I think, over the years. Um, it's still, I think, the best pure performance pocket pen out there. This is the shipwrecked color, which I named uh, on Instagram. Um, and it has the ridged section and a, I think it's just an Estabrook fine nib in there at the moment. Um, it's a very practical pen. I mean, you don't have to worry about damaging it, which I think is essential for a pocket pen. And I say that as I move into my final pen, which is absolutely the opposite. Uh, this is a Montegrappa Nomo. Uh, it looks like a lipstick. It's sterling silver and celluloid. The nib is uh, 18 karat gold with an ebonite feed. Like, these are all luxury attributes uh, and it's absolutely batshit crazy uh, for a pocket pen to be like this. It comes with a little fleecy leather holder. Well, it's not leather, not leather actually, fabric, but with... Um, it looks like a looks like a bomber jacket, um, and it writes astoundingly well. It's cartridge only, obviously, given the size. And I just love it as a piece of jewellery, almost. Um, but I like the way it writes so much that I choose to use it, not just in pocket pen scenarios, but when I'm sitting down at the end of the day to write my journal. It is that good. So it's completely the opposite of the Sean. They don't compete in any way. Um, chalk and cheese. So that's where I've ended up. Um, the only thing that I can think of that's really missing for me, based on going back to some of the pens I've had over the years, like I've had a Montegrappa Extra before, I've had many Magnas, I've had many 149s, um, I've had a few different Capluses, I've had a few different 2000s. These are the ones that I've come back to and refined and refined and got back to um, the perfect situation for me. But the one that's missing is a Conid King size. I've owned a few of those and kicked myself when I sold my last one. I thought actually I really like that pen and I can't get another one now certainly not for a realistic amount of money um, and there is one brand that I've I've had several of over the years that isn't here but it is on the way and that is a Visconti Brunelleschi um, which is the terracotta uh, faceted version of the um, um, homo sapien size so it's got the hook safe uh, it has a palladium nib this was a special edition that was released just before I got really into pens. And when I found it at the time, there were still a couple available. But I was thinking, Jesus, 600 quid or so for a pen. That's ridiculous. Whoever pays that? Um, that was five years ago. And then suddenly one pops up on the Iguana cell uh, and I buy it. It hasn't arrived yet. We'll see whether it is any good when it does arrive. Uh, but it was one that got away. So that may complete this train for me. So there we go. I'm Ant from UK Fountain Pens, formerly. Thanks for listening.